everyone, welcome back to my tutorials on my 90 variations of chain stitch. We are sewing through a sampler I have created that is completely based on the original chain stitch and the many, many variations that exist of that stitch. You can find the pattern for this sampler in my Etsy shop if you would like to sew along with us. We are currently working on circle one, uh, the very first circle, the center of your motif if you are creating the flower pattern. And we're looking at some of the detached chain stitch options. We already went through basic forward and reverse chain stitch as well as the variations on Lazy Daisy. There are a lot of ways that you can sew a detached chain stitch and they all sort of have their own specific design and purpose that has come from hundreds of years of embroidery history. And so we are going to be starting out today with the bull's head. This is a chain stitch with a straight stitch V attached to it. So the first thing that you're going to do is create the V starting on the outer points. You're going to do two straight stitches that end in the center. After that, you can come up at the very end of the third line that I've drawn for you here, or the dot if you're following the dotted pattern rather than the lined one. And you're going to slide your needle between the fabric and the thread to go under both of the legs of this V. You want to make sure that you are not going through the fabric at all, but you're not going through any of those threads. You're really perfectly sliding in between both of them. And then you're going to go back in the exact same location that you came up, creating that single chain loop right there. And I think this is called a bull's head because when you look at it with the V pointing upward, it looks like a little cow's face with some horns on top. Our next stitch is basically the opposite of a bull's head stitch, but of course it has to be categorized and given another name because this is the world of embroidery. So this one is called a detached wheat ear stitch, or um, sometimes people just call it a wheat ear. For this one, we are again going to create a V with two straight stitches, but this time you're going to start in the center of the V and go outward. You'll then come back up in that same center location, right at the point of your V, and go back down once again in that same location, but keeping a loop of thread on top of the fabric. You'll come up at the end of your third line, going through that loop, and then tacking it down with a tiny little straight stitch here, much like you would do for the very beginning of a forward chain stitch or for a simple lazy daisy stitch. So this one is often done in a connected chain, which is something we are going to do on one of the later circles. Um, and when you put them all together, it very much looks like um, an ear of wheat. And that's where it gets its name.
I'm calling this third stitch a rosebud stitch or a detached rosebud, um, mainly because I have not seen anyone else do this stitch. I looked around, I did some digging, and I didn't really see this stitch with a name anywhere, so I have made up this name myself. For this one, you're going to create an inverted V, and for this you are, again, starting on the outside and doing your straight stitches towards the center. Once you've created that initial V, you're going to come up at the end of your third point, and you're going to slide your needle underneath both of the legs of the V, just like you did for all of the previous stitches. The difference here is that there's nothing holding those legs down. So as you put the needle back into the same point where you came out, you're going to put pressure on those legs and pull them upward, creating what looked to me like a tiny little rosebud. Um, so I find this stitch really fun because it's a fun way to manipulate the thread rather than it going exactly where you left it. You're finding ways to pull the thread together to create a new look. Our fourth variation is the tulip stitch, which just as the weed ear was the opposite of the bull's head, the tulip stitch is the opposite of the rosebud stitch that I came up with. So we're again creating that V inverted this time and coming up from the center of the V going to the outside with our two straight stitches. We're then going to come up in the center again, go back down in the center, we're creating that loop on top of the fabric and then we're coming up in the center of that loop at the end of our third leg and tacking it down. And this is not one that I came up with myself. This one actually is a known stitch in existence and it is called the tulip stitch because it looks like a little tulip. You'll find a lot of embroidery stitches are named after flowers. Floral patterns, motifs, and designs have been a constant in the world of embroidery since probably it's conception. There's something about thread on fabric that just works really well for flowers. All right, and now we are departing a little bit from these V detached chain stitch variations that we've been doing. We're gonna do a twisted lazy daisy or a twisted detached chain stitch if you wanna get that super long name on there. This is going to be the little V marks that I've created out of dots or lines depending on which pattern that you're using. And for this, you're going to come up at the bottom of one of the legs, doesn't matter which one, and then you're going to go back down at the bottom of the other one. You don't want these to be too far apart or you're technically moving into 
a twisted detached fly stitch which is another thing that we're going to work on later that's the fun thing with embroidery if you move one of your stitches over a millimeter suddenly you could technically be doing a different stitch entirely so you want to keep the legs pretty close together for this um, no more than a few millimeters apart really so before you come back up through the fabric and through that loop to tack down the end of it you're just going to flip the loop over so that you're creating this nice little cross in the center and then your needle comes back up through the end through that loop and tacks it down with a little um, straight stitch. Now some people will teach the twisted lazy daisy um, as sort of a wrap around the needle before you go back through the fabric with your your second leg. I find it easier to just create that loop on top of the fabric and then flip the loop over before you come back through it. It's, it's always been the simplest for me. Hopefully it works for you as well. If you're finding that when you come back up through the loop, for some reason the twist is suddenly gone, then try flipping your loop in the opposite direction or moving the legs, the feet of your loop further apart from each other. Next up, we are going to be doing a layered Lazy Daisy or a layered detached chain stitch, also known as a berry stitch. This is literally just a series of Lazy Daisy stitches all on top of each other, each one getting a little bit bigger. So that very first one, you're gonna bring only about halfway up the line that I've drawn for you or halfway up the length between the two dots. So you're just creating this tiny little short lazy daisy stitch and then you're coming up in the exact same location so all three or two or however many of these stitches you want to make they're all going to share the same base point if you don't want to have too much of your thread coming up through the exact same holes you can move that base point around a little bit you can move them a bit apart from each other but you want to keep them close enough together that it looks like they're all coming out of that same place i'm going to do these first ones with three layered stitches and then I'll do one with two as we get towards the end. I think they look best with three. It just makes it look nice and full and you can kind of see where the name berry stitch comes from. You do want to make sure as you get to that third stitch that you're not pulling your lazy daisy stitch too tightly or that third one is going to want to pop on top of the two that were before it and create sort of a straight line rather than a nice full round stitch. All right, you guys, we have reached the very last stitch of our first circle. This is called the oyster stitch, maybe because it kind of looks like an open oyster with just lots of texture on the inside. I don't know. 
I didn't name most of these stitches. So first you're going to come up through the fabric at the base of that stitch and then we are actually creating a twisted lazy daisy. So you want to come back down just a tiny bit away to one side. The feet of our twisted one should be very close together for this. You do not want them distant like the ones we did before. Then you're going to come back up through that loop like regular but now instead of tacking it down we are going to slide our needle underneath the lower leg of our twisted feet. So to clarify you'll be going under the foot that is underneath the twist. This is going to keep that foot tacked down rather than having it lift up because you're sliding underneath it. As you do this the top of your loop is going to want to start pulling towards you. So you want to make sure that you're just keeping a bit of pressure on the top of that loop so that your thread circles around the side rather than just yanking the whole thing up and creating a little knot of thread at the bottom. Once you've gone through, we are basically creating a lazy daisy on top of the whole thing. So I like to go ahead and create a loop with my thread that kind of shows where it's going to be going around the entire stitch and then you're coming back down in the same location here at the base of the stitch. Then again you come up at the top of the stitch like you would for a regular lazy daisy and you're just going to tack that down with that tiny little stitch. This whole thing when you're stitching it you want to make sure that you're not pulling things too tight. If you pull really tightly on an oyster stitch you're just going to end up with a little knot of threads instead of this nice flat lumpiness that looks like an oyster I guess. So as you go underneath the foot as you create your final lazy daisy stitch. You just want to make sure that you're doing so gently and you're putting tension on the proper places in the thread in order to keep that stitch as flat as possible and as full as possible and therefore looking correct and lovely. All right, you guys, that is it. We have finished our very first circle. If you are following along on my chain sampler, that means that we have finished 15 out of 90 of the variations on chain stitch. Give yourself a pat on the back. These are a lot of the easy ones. They are gonna get significantly more complicated as we move forward, but don't worry. All of them are easy to master in the end if you just do a little bit of repetition, a little bit of practice. I hope that you really enjoyed this look at traditional chain stitch and then lazy daisy and variations on detached chain stitch. These are all really versatile stitches that are great to use in floral patterns, any kind of like repeating motif across something. There's honestly a lot of things that you can use stitches like this for and I hope to see you guys get really creative and try these out in different ways. So thanks very much for watching and we will be coming back soon with tutorials on circle number two.